we're talking about simple machines. There's six different types of simple machines. There's the lever, the wheel and axle, the pulley, the incline plane, the wedge, and the screw. Now the real purpose of a simple machine is to go through and allow work to be done more efficiently than it normally would by simply, say, lifting a box or pushing on some object. And each of these simple machines performs its own functions uh, and somehow makes that work easier. So what we're going to do is take a look at first simple machines in general, and then we'll take a look at each individual simple machine. Uh, but what I want to do first is look at truly what's going on with each of these simple machines. And to understand what's happening with a simple machine, what I want to do is look at the forces that we put into these simple machines and the forces that we get out. So for each of these simple machines, depending on how they're arranged, there's an input force. And that simple machine somehow goes through and transfers that force to an output side of the simple machine and we get what we call the output force. Uh, each simple machine works a little bit differently and, and works in different ways. And in some simple machines, you'll find that those input versus output forces are very similar, like we see with the pulley here. In other situations, like something with the screw, you might see an enormous difference between an input and an output force. It just depends on how the machine is designed or used. But in every case, what I want you to realize is we have input and output forces. Now, depending on where you look, I mean, you can find thousands of these types of videos on the internet. Uh, there's different nomenclature or vocabulary used. So I want you to realize everybody's talking about the same thing. Who's talking about simple machines? When we're talking about input force, some people might show that as F in, uh, you might see this as simply input, or what some people will refer to this as is an effort. Just depends where you look. The output force, you might just see that referred to as output, or some people will refer to this as the resistance. Realize these three, it's just a nomenclature or a vocabulary issue. They mean the same thing. F out, output, and resistance, they mean the same thing. Uh, but I wanna look at the, the lever specifically to try to understand what simple machines do and how this ties back to some things you may have already seen before. So what we're going to do here is allow this lever, when we push on one side of it, to rotate a little bit. And as a result, this left side over here is going to move through some displacement. I'm going to call this D in. And if this lever rotates around this fulcrum right here, this pivot point, we're going to see a large displacement over here. D out. And we'll get into why this input distance is different than this output distance, but not quite yet. Uh, but what I do want to point out, and what I want to be really, really purposeful about showing here is we're looking at displacement and force. Displacement and force. Now the displacements are different from the input to the output side, and so are the forces. But there's a really important thing here, and this really defines simple machines for us. I want to take a look at work. And work is defined as force times displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force and displacement. Uh, now you may have seen this before in, in physics. Uh, you may have talked about this in engineering. If you want to see a video, a real nice video by Hanson Feller about work, it's right up there. Spoiler alert, it's me. Uh, so this work can be applied to a lever. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, applying the work into the lever. 
If we were to push on this lever, we're doing work on it, we're giving it energy. And so that means the work in is going to be the force in times the displacement of the input side times the cosine of the angle between these two. Now the angle between these two, because the displacement's down and the force is down, uh, that's gonna be zero degrees. And we see a similar situation on the output side. Uh, so ultimately what we get is there's some work in and some work out. And the important thing to talk about with a simple machine is, is really what's happening is we're putting energy into the system. The system being the simple machine that we're dealing with. You can see energy goes in, that's the work done on the input side. Energy comes out, that's the work on the output side. And the important thing to remember here is energy is going to come in and energy comes out. Now, ideally, or in a perfect world, the amount of energy that goes into this lever is going to come out. Now, we have things like friction and inefficiencies. We'll talk about those later on. But if the energy that comes in equals the energy that comes out, that means these two are equal to each other. And so this is where we really get into the purpose of a simple machine. Because if we put in some force into a simple machine over some displacement, we're going to get some force out over some displacement out. And that's all well and good, but I want you to realize the purpose of a simple machine is to make a, a task easier or more efficient. And so if you look at something like a lever, here we saw a large input force and a smaller output force, but the trade-off was there was a greater displacement. So we could say we're gonna get a small output force and a larger output displacement for a given input force and input displacement. Or we could rearrange this, maybe looking at something like a wedge or a screw, where we might have a really small input and get a really large output force. Uh, this would be like taking this input and output, and as a result, getting a huge output force, but a very small input force. And so, Really what this is talking about is the conservation of energy. A simple machine is, is at least attempting to conserve energy. As we put work into the system, we get some work out. Uh, how that looks on the output side depends on the arrangement of the simple machine. And we'll go through each one of these in order to discuss exactly how it does what it does and how it turns input forces into output forces. But this, this transfer of energy from in to out leads us up to something called mechanical advantage. Now really there's two types of mechanical advantage. We have what's called ideal mechanical advantage, which you'll often see referred to as IMA. Now ideal mechanical advantage is defined as the input distance on a simple machine over the output distance. And then next we have actual mechanical advantage. You'll see this referred to as AMA. And we mathematically define AMA as F out over F in. So we actually have two different types of mechanical advantage. One is based entirely on displacements, how much displacement there is on the input side versus on the output side. Uh, now, if, if these are equal to each other, we would say we have an ideal mechanical advantage of one. If the input side had to move twice as far as the output side, we would say that ideal mechanical advantage is two. Um, and, and so the question comes up, well, what's a good ideal mechanical advantage? And the answer is, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, if you're trying to do something like split wood with a, a wedge, you actually want to move that wedge a long ways to split the wood just a little bit. Similar issue with a screw. If you turn the end of a wrench a long distance, you only want that screw to go in a little ways. So you look at this and go, well, wouldn't we always want to have a, a small ideal or mechanical advantage? The answer is no. With something like a screw, we want to turn that, that wrench a long ways in order to produce an enormous clamping force between this, this screw or bolt and whatever medium it's being driven into. So that brings us to an actual mechanical advantage, which is based on forces, output and input forces. 
Now in a perfect world, these would be the same, but they are not. Actual mechanical advantage is based on how much force we get out of a simple machine compared to how much we get in. And again, you wonder, well, what's a good actual mechanical advantage? And again, the answer is it depends on the situation. So we'll look at some situations coming up here. Uh, but the reason these are different from one another is because of friction. These simple machines aren't always frictionless. If you're trying to push a block up an inclined plane, there's obviously going to be some friction between that block and the plane. Same thing with a wedge, maybe you're trying to split some wood. A screw has quite a bit of friction. Uh, a wheel and axle actually has very little friction, so we would say it's very efficient. And this brings us up to the idea of efficiency, or really percent efficiency. Percent efficiency is simply defined mathematically as AMA over IMA. So, these are our six types of simple machines. Over here we see simple machines are really used largely to exchange force for displacement through the conservation of energy. We have mechanical advantage and our two types of mechanical advantage. And lastly, we have percent efficiency. In the next video, I want to talk about each individual simple machine and we'll do some example problems to put these mechanical advantage equations and our work formula to, wait for it, work. <laughs> that's punny. All right, so on that note, that's all for now.